Hello, Culture Matters Podcast. Boy, am I excited about our show today. I have a special guest for you. Before I introduce them, here is a quote just for this episode. Patience is waiting. Not passively waiting. That is laziness. But to keep going when the going is hard and slow. That is patience. The two most powerful warriors are patience and time. Leo Tolstoy, our guest today, understands patience and time. Greg Russian, founder of Russian Motivation, friend of the Culture Matters podcast. If you haven't heard him before on the show, clearly you're not listening. <laughs> Each episode that we do, we find a way to test ourselves both uh, physically and mentally. We're about to kick off this episode with 20, is it 20 or 25 push-ups? It's up to you, Jay. Oh, it's up to 25 since I put we my, have to my, now, right? my mouth. <laughs> but for years, Greg has been a high-performance advisor, mentor, coach. He's in, He's more than an accountability partner, but he is one. And if you lack it, you better listen to this episode. Let's do, and quite literally, right? Showing the way, leading by example. We are going to do, if you can't see us, I'm sorry, but maybe listening to this will motivate you, right? Motivation, pun intended. Uh, we're going to do 25 push-ups to introduce this, this episode. And this is, by the way, not something that I'm interested in doing. I mean, frankly, I worked out my trainer this morning at 630, but when I'm around Greg, I tend to do shit I don't want to do, which proves the point of his uh, value. So here we go. You want to, you want to count us out? Sure, let's go. Let's do it. I'm ready. 25. All right, ready? Oh, yeah, wait, no. The, you know what? I just, I need to do what you did because the audience needs to see me. Can you see me? I'm going to go to the ground. Or do I have to put it lower? Maybe a little lower. Here we go. There you go. All right. That way you can Perfect. see it. I'm lying here, right? Yep, we're good. Let's do it. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. I can't believe you signed me up for this. So I got a question for you. Whew. What, Dang, man, what? Catch our breath here. Yeah, this, yeah, <laughs> I'm asking you. Holy cow, we actually did it. If, if anybody's listening to this that hasn't, that's not watching the YouTube right now, uh, you can physically see us doing this on YouTube um, on the on the episode. But what, what Greg, what's the... What do you think the connection is with the physicality, you know, doing physically hard things and succeeding as a high performer in sales, entrepreneurship, business? Is there a connection? For sure. I think probably the most important connection is the ability to see change. We can change ourselves physically so easily and it's rewarding. It can, it can be a you know quarter mile walk at night, but then all of a sudden you feel better about that quarter mile walk and you do more and you stack it and you stack it and you stack it. So when you look at how you want to change not only your physical game, but your entrepreneurial game, it's the same exact thing. Do something little to propel you in the direction that you want to go. My mouth's a little dry after those push-ups. Dude, I, it's a lot harder than it looks. And you know, you've been count, you've been doing the counting on every push-up that we've done. I did the counting. It's harder when you have to count it out. Oh, did you notice that? Yeah. That. Why yeah. do you think I asked you to do it? That's funny. <laughs> I, 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 but, I, but no, when you can go when ahead. you can implement some things in your life that put positive energy and positive change, huh. the physical world is the easiest to see that change. It's so easy to do. Anybody can do it. And then when you look at how you want to succeed in business and your entrepreneurial experience, 
what are you not doing that you could be doing? It's as simple mm. as that. It might be a time management. It might be just commitment in general. What could I be doing to push this envelope a little bit further, put me a little bit closer to the direction I want to go? And what am I not doing? And when you can look back at that quarter mile walk that you started doing six months ago and how it's now three days in the gym mm. and you feel and look better than you ever have, it's the same thing in business. Uh, this uh, the, the spirit of this episode is uh, when we're recording it. So today is the day before New Year's Eve. Yes. When this is released, we'll be well in the throes of the 2024. That's Once right. We're in the time machine of this. What do you want the audience to firstly take away? Like, you know, what's your proclamation? My proclamation is to think bigger than where you're currently thinking. I think all goals should pull you in a direction that is almost simply unachievable and unimaginable. That's where some of the biggest growth comes. And if that's how we're setting our goals, we will likely be in a position that we never dreamed we'd be in. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm gonna go into 2024. And I'm also gonna take something into 2024 that I probably haven't taken quite as serious. And that's the fact that nobody can do things for me or help me do things better than I can myself. And I'm gonna put a lot more weight on myself in 2024 than I think I ever have. Wow. And, and I'm not I'm not discounting the importance of a mentor, the importance of a coach, but ultimately in my business, I've realized the people that succeed through my coaching and my direction are the ones that truly simply take it upon themselves. And you know, I think that I've failed at, you know, sometimes in my life too, where I've kind of relied on somebody to somebody that I'm working with maybe to, to help get me to that next stage. And when it's not going in the direction, when I reflect back upon why it might not be going in the direction, the arrows always point to me. So I'm going to try and eliminate as much of those arrows pointing to me as I possibly can. Wow. Wow. That's, that's powerful coming from a steward, a healer and a steward of uh, uh, uh for uh, yeah of others uh, uh, to be to be a coach yourself do you think it's important for coaches to have a coach i do yeah absolutely i've had several in my in my life both in the real estate business and in the personal coaching space <laughs> absolutely i have and i always call upon coaches and mentors and i think it's super important to do that but at the same time it's also super important not to put the the weight of where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do in the hands of the coach you take the direction and you put the actions into into motion um i'm curious what do you think are ways to sabotage the 2024 before it happens like like someone's listening to this now because we have new year's eve tomorrow right there's certain things we're going to do and not do right and when the, the listeners are listening to this, they can now reflect on what did they actually do the day before New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve, right? Like what type of person were they? I think that 48 hours of what they did or didn't do foreshadows where their results are in 2024. So I'm curious. I know that's like, just saying it out loud, I'm thinking like, I'm a little maniacal. <laughs> like, yeah. but, like, you know, someone's listening to this, all right, yeah, what's he going to say? Because I know where I was on New Year's Eve. I know what I did. I know what I didn't do. So what do you, what do you think today looks like and tomorrow to increase the likelihood of success for 2024 behavior? Like, what, am I, what are we doing with the next 48 hours or with this 48 hours? Well, to speak of, kind of to back up and support everything that we've just been talking about, when I leave this podcast, I'm going to go over to a friend slash business acquaintance and client of mine, and we're going to brainstorm a little bit about 2024. Uh, he's growing his business. He's also developing a branch off of his business that is a little bit more in the line of 
coaching and bringing other businesses up to the caliber of business that that he typically does business with. So it's really kind of unique. And I, and I want to get his perspective on how he's going to go about building this out in 2024. Um, and then, you know, to rewind an hour ago or so, I was hitting the pavement on a, a nice little five mile run to, just to get my head wrapped around maybe this podcast, maybe this meeting this evening. And, uh, you know, tomorrow I, I had big aspirations to do a little bit of research and some reading on really working on my social media and trying to maybe make some automations there so I don't have to put as much work involved. And then today was a little bit more cardio. I did do a small strength workout this morning, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to hit the gym and I'm going to, I'm going to hit some heavy, heavy body weight movements and some weighted body weight movements. And that always just, it always gets me in the right frame of mind. So that's no drugs. No drugs. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, no it's, like it's New Year's Eve, like YOLO. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, you, you do only live once. And I'm all about having a good time and, and, you know, kicking back and relaxing. But at the same time, you could say that same statement on the other flip side of it. You only live once. And, you know, I think I think it might have been Zig Ziglar said it best. Or, you know, I, I take that back. I think it was Jim Rohn. And Jim said, life is serious. And I've always, I've always kind of kept that close to me because it is. And every time that I do kick back and relax, I enjoy it. But at the same time, it's like, it's serious. And when I do kick back and relax and spend time doing something that I might, my time could be spent better. I always reflect on another new year's thing that I'm going to focus on. I turned 40 in August this past year of 2023. Wow. And it, it really brought to light the fact that life is short. And yes, you only do live once. And I have 40 years behind me. I may have 40 in front of me. I may not. Maybe I have more. Maybe I have less. But, uh, you know, it's, it's really 2024 is going to be a year of really analyzing my time and my time spend. And that's something I work with clients a lot lately. But even if you are the master at it and you even work with clients and train clients on how to be better with time management, I can guarantee every one of us could still become better, even if we are what we would say good. I think that's something that everybody can work on. What, what do you have what do you have to say to the listeners that are like late 30s that that feel stuck? Well, you know that. I was building things in my late thirties that were going to maybe make me unstuck at some point in time. And I actually walked away from corporate USA at 39 years old. And what I would like to say to those individuals is if you are stuck, that might be the perfect opportunity for a coach to help you help guide you through that period of time. But I would also say, believe in yourself and you have a lot of time left. There's so many people about my age that feel like they're just, they have the house, they have the dog, they have the kids, they have the family. And they basically sign up to be stuck the rest of their life mentally. And if they are looking for more, if that's everything they wanted and they don't feel stuck, great. That's a great spot to be in in life. But if you don't have everything you aspired to have and you are feeling stuck, I would say, believe in yourself, get yourself a little bit of help in the field of what you want to grow in, get unstuck, and you still have a lot of time left. There's a lot of time ahead of your late 30s that you can build businesses, you can you can inspire other people, you know, whatever it is you're looking to do, there's time, a lot of time. What do you think of this quote? We, uh, we overestimate what can be done in one year but we underestimate what could be done in 10. I think that's a very strong, powerful quote. And, and I like it because I think that that quote right there kind of proves the fact of maybe why people think that they are stuck because they do underestimate what can be done in 10. And it mm -hmm. starts with those little time managements and those little disciplines. And, you know, there's so many times in my week that I think, I, I don't have enough time to do what it is I'm looking to do. But in reality, I probably do. And that's what I always tell myself. 
instead of not having enough time for it, you simplify life and say, I make time for what's important to me in life. And then all of a sudden you get free time in your day and you can focus and you can better utilize that free time to do exactly what it is that's important to you. I have a very selfish question for you as an expert. You are basically a pro snowboarder about. I wouldn't say um, I've been doing it forever, but I wouldn't say pro. Let's just compare you to the average person. Uh, super pro that black diamonds though you could do easily. Yeah. <laughs> Your face. Yeah. Like you could, those kill people. Man. So yeah, <laughs> high, high level snowboard. I, 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 we're we're going to be skiing like for the first time. Right. Um, do you think that what's your advice around me getting a trainer or, or doing coaching as far as learning how to, cause I want to ski regularly, like, you know, annually. And I would like the kids that grow up that way. Anyway. So what would be your advice? Should I, cause I'm thinking about hiring a trainer and, and, yeah. and doing that and, you know, what advice would you have for me? And then I do want to segue this into business because I do have some th thoughts that I want to ask you around, like if that sport could actually help our business grow because of who I'll be around. So career. my first question around the I, coaching, I, mentor, training piece. Yeah. And I, I think that this is an awesome question. I love talking about it. I talk specifically about this situation with almost all of my clients. And I don't think that you could ask a better question to a better wow. person. Not to brag, but I, I was a snowboard instructor. However, in my early years of snowboarding, before I was a teenager, I was self-taught. And by the time I was an instructor, I think maybe 15 or 15 or 16 is when I became an instructor. And I actually learned the fundamentals of snowboarding that I already knew. I just didn't know I knew. Them. I knew how to turn, but I didn't know exactly what went into making that snowboard turn. So when it was broke down and I went through the training of how to become an instructor, I was like, wow, yeah, okay. In order to initiate a toe side turn, I do have to do those inputs and I do them naturally, but I never really realized that. And then when I learned those fundamentals, my snowboarding skill level went up at a time in my life that I didn't think it needed to go up or I, I wasn't thinking that it maybe even could for my ability. Uh -huh. So then I started teaching and I started teaching people with some skill level, some advanced skill level, some intermediate, and some with no skill level. And to focus on the no skill level, which might be you, <laughs> I'm telling you, they were learning in one hour what it took me a year and a half to learn. And I, it was just like a huge light bulb moment. And I'm like, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I get an instructor? I could have been so much further ahead. So I, I strongly advise wow. that. And I think that this is probably when we segue to business, but I think you're going to be so far ahead in one hour than you yeah. ever mean to be because you're in the hands of somebody that actually knows how to teach you the fundamental aspects of making it happen. Like you think it's possible for me to go in a day early, get the trainer, you know, one-on-one -on -one and be able to ski by the next day where I could not be foolish if I like really committed to it or does it take I do. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, always respect it and always understand your ability and never try and push the limits before it's too soon. I mean, that's where growth can occur. But at that stage in the game, when you're getting the fundamentals down, I would just focus on those before you start pushing it. But yeah, yeah. I, I think that, you know, if you start out on the on the beginner slope, I think by the end of day one, you might be hitting a larger slope, maybe a green circle or even a blue square. For sure. It can be. What are the levels? What are the levels? You know, it, it really differs by resort and oh. a lot of them use the same. So green circle is very easy, very mellow terrain. A blue square would be a little bit more intermediate. And then you get into your black diamonds, your single black, double black, triple black. But, uh, you know, like around here, I live on the East Coast. I live in Western New York. A black diamond around here is like a, a green circle out West at a bigger yeah. resort. It's just. You ever been to Vail? I've never been to Vail. No. Yeah, that's uh, is that where you're going? I, I, yep. Well, by the time this goes out, I, I think we would have been there already. So, oh, yeah, no. ideal. Right. The business side of it. Do you think that that's a, a sport that actually could? You know, how people say deals, deals are done on the golf course. I don't plan on ever golfing, and and I get asked, and the answer is, I'm not interested. I don't want to like talk to people for all those hours and hit the ball and like just drive me nuts. Uh, 
but you think that the, the snowboarding skiing culture is for our business listeners too, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> is or, or you think that's just like probably not? Well, you I know, think it's the ski culture, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it depends on the attitude that you have. You could go to a seminar strictly about the type of business that you run and not do business there because you chose not to. You know what I mean? Point. And you could go to a you could go to a, a ski resort, and if you choose to take it as a business opportunity and meet as many people as you can, get to learn everything about everything that you possibly can in the week that you're there, you very well could cultivate business. But the way that I would tie that into business is a little bit less on the networking side and trying to grow your business, but a little bit more on the fundamental discipline side of actually learning new skill, developing passion and deploying mm. that passion to grow. And that's how I, that's how I bring it into a lot of my coaching. I have my clients pick something they're good at. What are mm. you good at? And everybody always has something that they're good at, whether it's, uh, wrestling or snowboarding or fishing or golfing there's something that somebody is typically better than the average at now you called me a pro i'm by no means a pro but i would say i'm better than the average i've been doing it my whole life so when i pick that apart with a client and say okay you're good at let's just use golf for example because we were talking about it why are you good at golf well i just love it okay you have passion about it let me ask you this do you research the new clubs that come out every year? Do you know the difference in the different brands of clubs, how they're manufactured differently, why this one is more money than the other one? Well, yeah, I do. And the same with the cleats and the same with the outerwear and the rain gear and the bag, everything. Mm. You, you know more than most people because you research it, right? Yeah, I do. Okay. So you're passionate about it. You research the heck out of it. And to go even further, your social media algorithms and your YouTube algorithms probably are in line. When you go to YouTube, it probably has a bunch of golf things for you to look at, much like mine has snowboarding. And if you want to develop something else, say you want to grow your business or you want to develop another arm of your business, is there something that, is there a process and a procedure in your golfing that you could overlay onto that segment of business that you want to grow or learn more about? Chances are you're probably not 100% passionate about it because you don't know enough about it. You probably don't research it enough and mm -hmm. you probably don't deploy anything toward it. So if we can treat this section of business like you treat golf, do you think you could grow exponentially in it? And a lot of times it's just like an eye-opening experience of, yeah, you know what? What I am good at and what I am passionate about I do treat differently from how I want to grow as a person, a business person, you know, whatever it may be. Mm. Your vision for 2024. What's that? What's your vision for 24, 2024? My vision for 2024 is to take my business as absolute remote as possible. So I can be in front of as many people as possible. Mm. It's going to allow me freedom but it's also going to put me in other markets that i've never been in so i want to expand which is going to require more travel but as well as more zoom interactions like this you do uh zoom speaking or zoom trainings what are your thoughts on those I, so i think that that's a i think that's a a, a huge avenue and it's definitely something i'm gonna i want to get into and i think what i really want to do is i I got into this to help people and help as many people as I can. And for a person to work one-on-one -on -one with me, sometimes the financial commitment is a little bit too much for that person. So what I really want to do is develop a system where they can join on a monthly basis and be part of a larger group of coaching and learning. And that's a vision for 2024 that I have. Mm. So pull a bunch of people in to fund the my time and and then we can all feed off each other and i think can grow as a group and i think that would be a really cool vision and and deliver some amazing results for a multitude of people what's your podcast going to be called russian motivation podcast <laughs> and it, who would you, <laughs> you've been pressuring hey, about that for a while who, who, who who'd, who'd be your top five interviews my top five interviews you know, I, I haven't given enough thought off of the top of my head, but can I, 
can I tell you the type of person I'd be targeting? Yeah. I'd be targeting the heavily motivated, highly disciplined individual that has built awesome businesses. Jay Duran may be one of them. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just that 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 grinder, the person that sees a big vision that goes after it and isn't afraid to take on risk and put themselves in places that the majority of society would just stay away from. I'd be honored to be on your podcast. It'd be a lot of fun. It um, would be a lot of fun. How many episodes will you record in your first year? Jeez, you really put me on Dude, the spot. this is good. Yeah, this is yeah. Good. So how you many made me do all these push-ups. I mean, <laughs> push like, you know, it's awesome because every time you know we record, we do the push-ups. That should really send a signal to people. But no, like, this is a good learning experience for me. Let me let me ask the master himself. How many did you do your first year in the podcast? If you had to guess, oh, I don't, I don't. I, you know, I don't. I, I it, it definitely, definitely less than. A hundred, definitely. And this year, you're, you're way less than a hundred. It had to be close. To you. It had to be. I, I, I'm just gonna like tell you because I can find it really quickly. I can look at the seasons because when we look at the um, like we can come back to them and give you the real answer. I definitely won't think that's good. It's a really great question for the podcast because a lot of the listeners have interest in starting a podcast, but they don't you know, it can be intimidating. Like, what do I need? And yeah, sure. Who would want to do it? And who would listen? And uh, how would I get it out? And do I need a budget? Like those intimidate the listeners. Uh, right. But sorry, you were going to say something. I'll get the answer to that. You, uh, this, this year for 2023, you're going to finish somewhere around 260. Is that right? If all goes well and tomorrow, New Year's Eve, everyone shows up, I think, We'll be at uh two sixty four, two sixty four. Wow, maybe two sixty six, depending on because I started doing monologues with thirty days of thought, where I pick an excerpt, I read it, I I I and I explain my thoughts of the thought. So I've been doing the monologues. Okay, all these activities led me to do more things alone, and so it it may end up being two sixty six in the year wow all like an hour to two hours i mean some uh, there, some have been very small minority were like 20 minutes five minutes most an, a, an hour like the average be like probably an hour so, so i'm gonna i'm gonna answer your question but that's exactly what i'm talking about about 2024 is that seems like a daunting task for most people to report 20 year one 20 in year one well, well wait it started on the podcast podcast November of 2019. Okay. Oh, so that's November. I got to look at November of 2019 to November of 2020. Let me, I'll tell you right now, November of 2020. Up, uh, up, uh, we're at, I'm at 47, 48, 51 by May. No, 59 by July. 67. I'm still in August. I'm still in 2020. Here we go, November. 19 about 80 about 80 somewhere between 80 and 100 because some of them came out later right i'd say it's safe to say the first year of the podcast recorded like 100 but then there was put it this way in 2022 there was like 20 recordings we as the tectonic plates of economy shifted the pendulum started swinging another way we're going into the fire with our client partners. And of course, the marketing and branding arm took a hit. And so I realized, whoa, I got to make up for lost time. And I can tell you next week, I'll record more podcasts next week than I did in the entire year of 2022. Wow. Think about that psychologically. Yeah. Right. In one week, do more. So now, you know, what the hell was I doing? Plenty of excuses I could make because it was an amazing year, 2022, but um, for many reasons, in all ways you could think. But what the hell happened in the podcast? I care deeply about did 100 of the first year. So to answer your question, about 80, 90, 100, it's hard to say, but somewhere around yeah. that year one. 
No, that's that's great information. And before I answer your question, that's exactly what I'm thinking and talking about with 2024, year 2024. Like that 266 podcast seems like such a daunting task for somebody. And, you know, how do I start a podcast and get to 266 episodes? But if you break it down, that's less than an hour a day. It's really not that much of a commitment. Now, I know there's some people back in. Oh, yeah, I'm a bitch. I'm just (laughs) There's a lot of stuff on the back end, but it's nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, my my before I even asked you about your first year, my my thought was, uh, you know, one episode a week. And then here I am talking about goals and making goals like so far astronomical. Now that I break that down and analyze it and think about it. That's way too little. If I'm doing one a week, an hour a week, that's way too little. I mean, you have to think about it like this. How hard is it to have a conversation with somebody you either want to get to know better or you already like talking to? Like, yeah, right. We enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy talking to you. How hard is this? How hard would it be to do this every day? Right. That's literally what I do on top of all the other shit I got to do. Yeah. So, so it, when you break it down like that, I've noticed this myself. Can I do eleven in a day? Yeah, I've done it, and I and they've and they've been very high quality in my <laughs> little sound. How would I know? But the feedback's been positive despite yeah. doing eleven a day. Like I, I'm told, right? Oh, this is great by like the guests and, and the fans that are listening because the, the listening times there. But eleven in a day is not sustainable for me based on just you know normal psychology and then also like other things to do. Right, you have a, like yeah. two in a day or three in a day, and of course as you do something it becomes more and more of a skill. Sure. But it's it'd be super, it compounds. It's compound where there's no way I would have been able to do 11 a day year one. There's no way I would have been able to do, I mean, I don't want to say no way, right? The four minute mile. But like, there's a difference between that first four minute mile and, and doing it many times. Yeah. So what were you going to say? Sorry. No, I think that, I, I think you hit on it for sure. But, uh, yeah, I think my my goals there were were too little. Once we break it down, just like how I want to break down more of 2024, just like that. Like, let's really think about it. What is the time commitment? Where do I get that time? Because I think the first thing I'd ask you is, in your, you know, are there a dozen people in your life that you think would be interesting conversations or or could be absolutely that's the easiest way to get started? It's like who who are yeah. the people. That now, this might be one this might be a good question for your listeners too um and maybe you don't want to answer that and that's that's totally fine but for my own personal thinking about a podcast of the 266 if you off the top of your head could break it down how many of those are monologue with just you and then of the rest of that number how many different people because i know i've been on four times now Oh, that's a good question. There's tiers. So there's really f- six tiers. Uh, there's those that have been introduced to the show. Okay. Like, you, Tony recommended you highly. Right. Uh, there's those that I say, oh, you know, I'd like to have this person on. And I personally ask them because okay. I've been interested. There's those that come on regularly that at one point they they started in a different tier, right? They yeah. were introduced or I pursued them. They, so they come on regularly. There's those that um, I would just say like a miscellaneous. Did I just forget one? Uh, I think I'm forgetting a tier, but it, it'll come to me. Miscellaneous, is essentially. And then um, monologue. Well, oh, 30 days of thought is what I was forgetting. Like that, I would even argue that's separate from like a monologue because that's a that's a process I'm attempting to exemplify through the show. Okay. Uh, so there's different types there's also group like panel type things we're experimenting with. Um, to answer your original question though, less than I would say about seven or eight is me. Okay. And there's almost two dozen, I would call them regulars. Like there's there's there there have been people, Brian Hess has been on the Culture Matters podcast yeah, 19 times. It's just okay. we haven't released all of them. We're doing episodes with Christine Beckwith for each chapter of her book. I'm bringing different authors on to, do, to interview them on each chapter of the book. So, and then there's like yourself, like this is a handful of recordings we've had. There's like a solid two dozen people that 
I would consider regulars. Okay. Between four times and, and 19 times. And there's there's there was a somewhere between 50 and 70 that would fall into like a miscellaneous or a and a few dozen introduction type. So that's kind of like off the top of my head how that 260 range number goes. There's a tremendous amount of people that come back on the show and all the conversations are different. And that's something I deeply want because this show is my uh, best opportunity to to articulate culture without talking about it. For sure, yeah, I can see it's that. It's a culture. It's great. Yeah. And it's, it's so, so, uh, what else? Oh, 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 the other, there's also people, this is important, I want the audience to know, and, and just us, there's those you could consider the peers, and there's those that I'm lifting up, and there's those that I'm pulling myself up. So let's say there's somebody famous. By having them on the show and honoring them with the interview, culture is pulling me up. Right. There's yeah. those that I'm pulling up. I'm going out of my way to pull up. There's no, it, it, I'm not getting extra clout for. Yeah. That's intentional because that's culture. There's right. those, I have competitors on all the time and I spotlight them to the best of my ability. That's culture too. So the types of guests, it matters too. It's like, there's those above us in the power a dynamic there's those below us there's those to the side and if a podcast host is only aiming for those above them i would say that reveals their character deeply and their intentions and they likely haven't thought it through very deeply and the likelihood of them sticking with the podcast as a medium is a lot lower right it's a fairly shallow interesting yeah unless they're really yeah. hyped up on you know power like super yeah yeah power right because wow. just by just by being near someone in a position of power, there's an association of power. Because right. why would Gary Vanner, I'm just naming random people, why would Gary Vanerchuk be talking to person A? Well, if person A has paid and or done something where there's a reciprocity to be interviewing the Gary, then essentially the Gary, I'm just speaking in generalities or whoever it is, has sold a part of their soul, uh, not soul, that's a little aggressive. Uh, let's say brand. They've sold brand. Yeah. Right. They've commoditized their brand. Someone has, uh, is, and now if there isn't an exchange of goods or, right, or services, just the mere proximity has a value to it because people listening are thinking, hey, look at that person with Gary V. Right. Exactly. So my thing is if that person's interviewing Gary V and they're not also interviewing their neighbor, People below them were there like Gary Vee and the person below them is nobody. I think that it hasn't, well, you know, it reveals that them and also they're missing an opportunity. So the show yeah. is a mixture of like repeat is, you know, people that are in my life, like you, like I like talking to you. Why not record it? It's like, it's like having coffee. The best come of the best conversation. Right, exactly have never been recorded. Like, what a shame. Um, I, right. I think I mentioned all the tears. It was like, because that's what's happened. A lot of people say, hey, can you interview? And of course, there's a difference between an interview and a conversation. Like, this is more of a conversation. We have a right. different relationship than somebody that I've never met um, who's coming into the context as, hey, today's an interview. It's going to be about this. It's going to be about this. And I really need to be a servant to the spirit, their spirit. That's a different, if I, in the middle of the interview, I start, you know, pontificating about <laughs> culture. Terrible. Yeah. We're getting yeah. angry about something which turns out in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to hear you just talk about this because listening to your podcast, I can almost, I can almost categorize the different levels which is really cool really and oh, that's yeah cool. Okay. yeah and you can, i can see that yeah that's that's really that's that's awesome and, yeah. and i hope There's that the listeners are seeing my evolution 
because I'm slowly climbing into myself essentially through the medium of the podcast. Yeah. So if like one starts at the beginning in November 2019 and they listen, they're going to see me slowly opening up through the process of humbling myself before the guests. Yeah. And and so slowly but surely, like now it's more and more people coming on the show that, you know, I've got my friends on the show. I've got my enemies on the show. I've got, you know, who's the enemies? And I've got my, <laughs> right? Like I said, people that are pulling up, people that are pulling me down. I would say one thing, I don't nearly, and this is something I have to work on. If you're going to talk about things you want to work on in 24, I, I, I'm not, um, I'm actually not putting enough um, vulnerability out there, inviting people way beyond, way, way, way beyond, you know, like the, 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 the celebritized people. Yeah. The show predominantly is just my network and, or people like really, that if I do ask for them to be on, it's people that, are close to me in, in power. So uh, based on who we, you know, who we're connected to and what we do and all these types of things. So there aren't big names. I guess it's an easy way to say it. There aren't really big names on the podcast. It's extremely small minority. Um, and that's something that it ultimately I'm going to be tested, right? Yeah. If I'm getting yeah. a president on the podcast, it's going to be a different type of preparation than even the CEO of a company that's been in business for, you know, 20 years. Like what yeah. I've learned interviewing people is based on what they've accomplished in their life, the interview is harder or easier because okay. of the amount of information. Right. Yeah. Like if somebody has done this, 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 I mean, and you don't ask about this, this, that, and that, that means you didn't do your homework. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, in, in you know, final thoughts, I mean, what the heck could our audience take away from this conversation today? Well, you, you know, I, I I might want to try and throw down a challenge to you that kind of wraps all this together. I like this. All right. I'm writing it down. So when you go to Aspen and you learn how to ski or snowboard or whatever you choose to do out there, and you were kind of wondering how Damn, all that Damn, was yeah. in the business, what if by the time that our listener, your listeners hear this episode, what if you already have somebody from your Aspen trip in queue? That you've recorded a podcast how cool would that be because now you have a goal to kind of go out there to expand business into an area Genius. that you might not even have thought of going into and maybe that deal could be done on the golf course per se uh just it's veil vale, not aspen just for the oh, veil. Vale. i'm sorry just because oh, you, know, you don't want to use. mess those those people i think they compete with one another it's like, <laughs> it's it's rivalry like saying there? it's like saying you know like uh the eagles versus the cowboys or something like that but yeah. uh th that is a great idea thank you and and if this is anything like what you do with your clients the audience needs to search you out where can they find you and how can they hire you greg the best way to do it is right on the website, which has links to all social media channels. And you can contact me directly through that site. And that's RussianMotivation.com.